Well, welcome back to another episode of Fox Sports Live NRL. I'm Eloise Sawyer, joined alongside by Josh Morris, who is out on the golf course. How are you getting here today, Josh? Uh, we're playing an Ambrose four-man, so uh, we're going all right, but uh, we've we've picked the worst day of the month so far with lots of rain, so uh, happy to be in the buggy and trying to stay dry. Well, while you stay dry, Josh, let's chat all things rugby league and obviously a huge round that was. I think we might break this up into three parts, this sort of review. Let's start with a premiership watch after what we saw on the weekend after round 23. The Panthers, it goes without saying, they are looking scary. Luai, Cleary, they're in ominous form at the moment. It's hard to look past them at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, their halves are on fire, but it's their forward pack as well. Fisher-Harris. Isaiah Yo, like Yo, the other night, his ball playing with the likes of Luai and Cleary, they looked so dangerous against the Melbourne Storm side, who were without obviously uh, Jerome Hughes and Xavier Coates. Um, but yeah, they looked a class above, and, and it's scary heading into the finals that they could still play even better than this. They've still got players to come back into their side, so. Um, yeah, Penrith are the front runners. It's it's theirs to lose. Um, we could be seeing a three-peat. Yeah, absolutely. Do you think it's a two-horse race between Penrith and Broncos? Are they the only real threat at this point to to the Panthers, or do you see do you see any other Smokies coming through? Well, there could be a couple of sides, but at the moment, it, it kind of does look like that that two-horse race at the moment. I, I really liked what the Broncos did against the Cowboys on the weekend without Adam Reynolds. Um, mm. The young half, Ezra Mim, he was outstanding. Reese Walsh, he's been a revelation at, at fullback for the Broncos. But it's the same thing. It's the forward pack, the likes of, of Flegler, Carrigan and, and Haas. Carrigan scored a try and set up a try. And, um, yeah, I think if anyone looks the goods at the moment, it, it's probably those two sides, the Broncos and the Panthers. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let, let's look at the top four overall. And I want to focus on another forward pack that was super impressive at the weekend, that being the Warriors. Fanua Blake, 169 metres, Barnett, 165, and uh, Ford for 146. That is the sort of platform you want your forwards laying behind a Warriors outfit with the likes of Sean Johnson there in the halves. They're looking like they're going to be some of those smokies that we talk about. Yeah, they are. They're, de- they're definitely a smoky. And um, it's off the back of those forwards, but uh, Sean Johnson playing behind them has been playing some of the best football of his career. Um, they had a buy and then had the uh, had the Titans on the weekend, and they were actually probably lucky to get away with it. Mm. Um, they, they were pretty scrappy, and and uh, Andrew Webster wasn't too happy with his side's performance. He was happy that they won ugly, but he would have liked to have seen a, a more dominant performance after them losing one man, but. Yeah, they can beat any team on their day and uh, will come down to the likes of those those forwards, but also Sean Johnson and, and that spine as well. And, um, yeah, I, I wouldn't count out the Warriors just yet. Do you think Sean Johnson's up there in the Dalian contention? Could he come through, do you think, at the, other end, at the end of the season? Well, I think any time the Warriors win, he's at the forefront of a win uh, and mm. he probably would be polling points. So... Um, they have been playing some good football and he's been probably their best uh, week in, week out. So, yeah, he could be a big chance of winning the Dalian this year. And just touch on the Storm. We touched on them just briefly before when they came up against Penrith. Are you convinced with where they're at at the moment? We know they were missing a few, but it's not probably where Craig Belling needs them considering where we are at the season. Yeah, look, I, I think he wasn't um, too unhappy with the side's performance given their late withdrawals from the game. Um, We saw Jerome Hughes the week before. He was their best player in that storm jumper. So uh, to lose a key player, especially in the spine, um, it it takes a toll a day out from the game. And obviously we saw Ryan Pappenhausen make his comeback uh, for the Sunshine Coast Falcons. And from all reports, got through that. And they'll probably look to him play another week or two there before he comes back into the side. And what a boost it is to get a mm. calibre of his player come back just before the final. So um, any team that's coached by Craig Bellamy and they're still sitting in that top eight, they're a worry. Yeah, absolutely. Can't wait for Pappenhausen's return to the top grade. Just quickly before we uh, finish up this top four chat, the Raiders, have they got what it takes to go deep into finals time come September? Yeah, um, unfortunately, I, I don't think so, Eloise. I think their they're for and against has indicated that they leak mm. a lot of points. Um, they were taken to the death by 
the Tigers yesterday as well. Um, they would have liked to have put a bit more of a dominant performance in. So, um, yeah, unfortunately, I, I can't see them uh, making too much of a run in September. All right, let's talk about the race for the eight because that is what everyone's talking about at the moment. It's so tight. The competition is so close. Let's touch on the Eels. They started well. They finished well. Probably wasn't as convincing for an 80-minute performance, but they need to win these next ones against the Broncos, Roosters, Panthers, and then a bye. If they want to be there in September, they'll have to put on big performances against those teams. Well, that's it. They've probably got the toughest run out of everyone in those mm. uh, last games. The Roosters, obviously, they'll want to keep winning to try and have a mathematical chance of making the finals. And then they face the Broncos and Panthers, who are the, the top two. So um, their performance wasn't that inspiring on the weekend against the Dragons. They were probably lucky to get away with it. And there was a, a contentious call there with the Gutherson strip. So, um, yeah, I, I can see them probably just missing out with, with that run home. You talked about last week, you tipped the Roosters, you said you'd give them one more chance and they did it for you, Josh. They got the win over Manly, much more convincing and a much better defensive effort as well for the Roosters. Yeah, it was. I think everyone uh, contributed. The outside backs were outstanding. Um, but, yeah, the forward pack, they led the way. Jar Jared Waria Hargraves, he's been leading the way all year for them and Lindsay Collins as well. So, um, yeah, whilst they've still got a chance, they'll, they'll go out and try and um, knock those teams off above them. So um, I might give them another chance this week. Maybe it's another week. Uh, fingers crossed for that one for the Roosters as well. Well, the Knights, um, they're now in eighth, for the first in eighth position for the first time since round six. You spoke a couple of weeks back about what they could have looked like, their season could have looked like, had Ponga been there the entire time. He was again on fire and leading the way for the Knights against the Dolphins. Yeah, he was outstanding against the uh, Dolphins, scored the first try in the match. And, and just looked dangerous every time he got the ball, um, mm. taking on short sides and, and come up with some pretty crucial plays late to get them home. So, um, yeah, they're finally back in the top eight. And um, I think they've got a lot of home games coming up. So they're a big chance of making it in the eight. Well, let's focus our attention to another half that was on fire. Nico Hines, he sort of led the way. There was so much pressure heading into this game. They needed to get a win over there in Perth and they turned their season around or at least got themselves looking like they can be there come September for finals time. What did you like about that matchup? Yeah, I, I thought that was the upset of the round. Um, Souths had everything to play for as well. They've mm. got all their origin stars back. Uh, the Sharkies, they've been down on troops having lost Will Kennedy the week before as well. Um, yeah, they just played a, a really exciting brand of footy, but it was a defense as well. They got out to a 26 uh, nil lead. Obviously, they scored a couple of tries late to, to make the game a bit closer. But um, they, they were outstanding and, and um, for Wade Graham, he played his 250th game as a Shark. So that milestone game, uh, they really wanted to get that win for Wado and, and they went out and did it. And that gets them back on track as well. Um, if they dropped this game, they would have made it a whole lot tougher for themselves. But uh, that win will give them a lot of confidence heading into the back month of footy. Yeah, come up against the Titans, Cowboys, Knights and Raiders. And just lastly, before we let you go, Josh, the Rabbitohs, just not convincing on the weekend. They had the return of Latrell Mitchell the last couple of weeks. Were you, are you surprised by how they've sort of, what they've been putting out at this end of the season, considering they are at full strength and, you know, a lot of strike power across the, across the field? Yeah, I was a little bit concerned the week before as well when they played the Tigers. They they weren't convincing against them either. The Tigers kind of took it to them for most of the game. Uh, and then obviously this week's game against the Sharkies, they were they were the favourites to win. And, and then they just didn't come out and play football. And um, Jason Demetrio gave them the spray that they probably deserve. They need to figure out what they want to do with this season. And if they don't uh, make finals, it, it will certainly be a big waste. Yeah, so they come up against the Dragons and they face the Knights. They've got the bye and the Roosters. Let's hope they can turn it around. Josh, we'll let you get back to the golf course. Enjoy the afternoon. Thanks so much for your chat and we'll speak later in the week to preview round 24. Thanks, Eloise. Imagine what you could be buying instead. For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.